Hello and welcome to this World's 2022 preview video where we're going to cover G2 Esports. Uh, down in the description you're going to find three links, Twitter, uh, Discord, and YouTube memberships. Twitter, follow me there so I can spread my social media wings. Um, Discord, we have like 280 members or so. Sometimes we have like 50 to 80 members online. Um, it's active for the most part, especially when games are going on. So if you'd like to stop it by and say hello, that's cool. Uh, there is a uh, activities category where you can do your predictions when the world starts, pick -ems, and a player pool game that I started. We have, I think, 28 or 29 participants thus far. Um, but yeah, so, and YouTube memberships. $3 supports me, keeps the channel alive. We have uh, several people already in there, but it's, of course, going to be better to have more. Um, just so this channel can, you know, sustain itself. That's what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for, you know, to, for millions of dollars or something crazy like that. I'm just looking to sustain myself and be able to do this full time because I have been uploading every day for literally, what, nine months now. So it would be real cool if, you know... People could support me. Um, Ten dollars supports me even more, um, and you get extra content. Uh, NFL football content a couple times a week. No promises on always a couple times a week, but right now it looks like a couple times a week during the season. And then um, uh, League of Legends predictions. The day before the game, I upload a video. I do my roundup, and then I do my um, predictions afterwards, where I upload it to members only. So if you'd like to do that, support me. That'd be cool. Um, so there's going to be some questions here on why G2 is today. Obviously, with G2 being in the news yesterday, I will not talk about that at all. Um, this is completely about these five and the coach. I am not going to talk about the drama. Um, it is going to seem a little ironic that I am talking about them the day after that drama, but I will tell you to look back at my latest several videos, and you'll see that I had worked out a... Um, trend here i was doing lec lcs minor region lec lcs minor region lec today so this was uh set up for a week now um now g2 second seed lost to rogue 3-0 we saw it they got smoke showed right everybody was shocked uh coach dylan falco 41 and 30 um a lot of his uh, success has come with Fnatic, Worlds 2017, 5th, 8th, MSI 2018, 3rd, 4th, Worlds 2018, runner-up, and MSI 2022, 3rd, 4th. So, pretty solid coach when he gets to an international event. Um, the last couple of years he hadn't been, but um, G2 obviously doing very well as they normally do. These players are elite. Uh, 2019, second seed of the LEC were out in quarters, 2020 out in quarters, and last year, Fnatic was the two seed, and we know all the drama that happened with there with Upset, so that team was out in groups. Um, the vibe I get from this team, so clearly, I believe, so, see, I don't edit these videos if you're new to the channel. Um, the way I look at this, we see Yankos and Caps, right? Two of some of the best players we've ever had in the West, right? Definitely most internationally successful. Um, that is without question, right? Um, but eventually you hit the spot, especially for Yankos. Caps is still in his prime, but you reach a spot where, um, you know, is, have we missed the window here? And they're trying to extend the window. Broken Blade was like the bridge there where they're extending the window. And now they have Flacket and Targamus. Last year they went with Reckless, obviously, and, and Mickey, and it didn't work. But um, you get what I'm trying to say here. You know, they're trying to, extend their window of championship success that they had in 2018 and um 2019 so top lane you have broken blade 3.5 uh cs 8k uh 3.5 kda 8 cs per minute 50.4 kp what does that mean that means a lot actually there's a lot there that we aren't seeing with other players the 50.4 kp is probably the lowest i have seen out of any top laner so far doing these um previews which we've done a lot right we've done like 20 of them so far 19 or so um so this team is still split pushing a lot broken blade is in the side lane a lot and eight cs per minute is actually a little sus given the fact that that happened which we're going to get into for the rest of his stats 23 7 damage share 522 damage per minute that's a very high damage share 
We know what the concerns are with this team, which we'll get into, but um, that would explain it, right? He's dealing a lot of damage. You can't take that away. Over 500 damage per minute is solid. But 23.7 would indicate he is eating too much of the damage. You'd like that to be around 21 or so. And you say, oh, well, 3% isn't a lot. 3% should be the three percent should be on the bot side of the rift you should not be getting a lot of your damage from the top side of the rift in the meta that you were just in now if the meta switches to the top side of the rift um all of a sudden you're in a good spot but right now the way it is i don't really i'm not a big fan of having nearly 24 percent of your damage in top lane behind at 15 minutes this is important one solo kill six champions in 10 games behind at 10, uh, 15 minutes that explains the ACS per minute, right? So you're in a hole at 15 minutes. On average, he's in a hole, which is not good, right? That You know, you're against Odo Omne and um, what, they play Misfits? They play Misfits and and, and uh, Rogue? Um, or they play Fnatic. Either, either way, in a hole, right? That's not good. Re domestically, you're a representative of your region. You don't want to end up in, in, in a significant hole like that at um, playoffs and then try and go to Worlds. 2020, uh, out in groups with TSM, MSI 2022, runner uh, third, fourth. Between the two um, trips, Broken Blade went 13 and 14, 209 KDA, 85 CS per minute, 52 1 KP. That is what you want. Um, now, eight is the bar. That's the threshold. Anything above eight is gravy, in my opinion, for a top laner, especially given the fact that it's a tank meta. Um, maybe you get freaky with an Aatrox or a Necton or a Nar, but you also can see a Sejuani or an Orn or a Gragas up there and just tank farm, right? Um, so 8.5 is very good at international events. Between the two international events, very good. 52 KP would indicate why he's at eight and a half. He's in the side lane a lot and getting farm in his matchup kind of left on his own with TP, which is why when you see eight and a 50.4, you're like, why is it so low? It should be higher. So that's a thing. Jungle, we have J Jankos, or well, sorry, Yankos. Um, three KDA, five CS per minute, 67, nine KP. Better than what we've been seeing, but not quite enough. You'd like him to be doing more up around 70 KP if he's not farming at five and a half, five point two five CS per minute. Obviously, that's very nitpicky. It's not as bad as what we've been seeing lately where some teams are at 4.8 and, you know, 60 and things like that. 11.9 um, damage here, 271 damage per minute. That's fine. That's standard. Not a lot of damage coming out of the jungler. The jungler is not a damage dealer in this meta they are a facilitator if you can do a lot with little you are in a good spot um re-watching top versus jdg yesterday you clearly see how tian was so impactful on the rift with little you know he's playing poppy he has little um farm little impact and damage but he is finding a way to make things happen if you can make things happen with nothing this is going to be a really good spot for you at Worlds. Ahead at 15 minutes, no solo kills, five champions in 10 games. Um, I did notice this team, and it's clear as day if you watch their games. They are definitely the most eccentric Western team there is, and probably one of the more eccentric teams we're going to find at Worlds. Very deep champion pools, um, which has been a case for G2 for years. Worlds 2016 with H2K. Third, fourth, 2018, third, fourth, MSI 2019, G2 would win. Uh, Worlds 2019, runner-up. Worlds 2020, third, fourth, MSI 2022, third, fourth. Yankos is 65 and 43 at international events. 235 KDA, 523 CS per minute. 66.2 KP, all standard, um, especially when he's played for so long. I mean, to have a KDA above 2.3 uh, is actually pretty damn good because we don't see a lot of twos. Um, when we're doing this really and to play that many games in other metas I mean he played the meta where he farmed under 4 CS per minute, right? So that's why when I look at 5.23, it's irrelevant um, He's played for so long Caps 5.6 KDA 888 88 CS per minute 80.9 KP Caps made it all happen for G2. A lot of people are upset with me that I didn't have Caps in my top three mid laners from the LEC in summer, and that's pretty much because I felt like he sandbagged summer. I'm going to say that I think he sandbagged summer. I think he sandbagged spring. 
playoffs, he shows up in a big way, great. I'm not going to give you a regular season award for what you do in the playoffs. But in the playoffs, he is dominant. 8.8 .8 is more than good enough. 80.9 KP is fantastic. So four out of every five kills, Caps is involved. Not only that, he is farming at a high level. You look at Broken Blade, that's the opposite. Not to bash Broken Blade. But the fact is, clearly, Caps is getting the farm. He's making things happen. He's the only player that is doing both of those things on this team. 262 uh, damage share, so 26.2. 608 damage per minute. That's a lot of damage from mid. But it's pretty standard, right? So where is this 3 or 4% coming from that Broken Blade has? Well, it's from bot lane, which... We all knew that, but surprise. I mean, it's just like, it, it sucks. So, Caps mixed at 15 minutes. Why is this? He's ahead in gold, but behind in XP. He's even in farm at 15 minutes, according to Games of Legends. So, he's out of lane. He's trying to make things happen. That 80.9 KP, trying to save bot, trying to save top, trying to roam and make his laners succeed. Um... And he's trying to do it all. He really is. Um, more so than Yanko. 67.9 versus 80.9. That should be flipped. That should be flipped. It's it's not... Um, they're not in a good spot. Uh, three solo kills, seven champions in ten games. A lot of different champions out of caps. Um, played a Varus mid even. Um, and won with it, I'm pretty sure. So, like I said, G2 is willing to pull all the rabbits out of the hat. And that gives you an opportunity to beat teams better than you. We look at their group, JDG and Damwon. Do you think Damwon would have been prepared if they pulled out a Varus mid at random? No, that wouldn't have happened. Now, do they win the game? Probably not. But are they going to be prepared for it? No. And that little bit of shock value, little bit of surprise can go a long way. Very unpredictable. Being unpredictable, being chaotic. I talk about with VCS all the time and teams that are not are from playing regions trying to get into worlds. You have to play a little freaky to get the job done. G2 does that. That If you really think about it, G2, when they were great, they always had some freaky pike plays and things like that going on that not everybody else were, was doing, and that gave them an advantage. Um, so, Worlds 2017 with Fnatic out in quarters, MSI 2018 out in semis, Worlds 2018 runner-up. Then he'd go to G2, MSI 2019 win, 2019 Worlds runner-up, Worlds 2020 out in semis, MSI 2022 out in semis. Caps went 71 and 50 throughout all these events. 241 KDA, 853 CS per minute, 68 and 9 KP. Obviously a elite mid laner, world class, one of the best at the tournament. Definitely the best Western mid laner at this tournament. Um, that is that is without a doubt. So, um, you know. He's going to try and make everything go. He really is. Obviously, he has continued to make everything go. He's still in his prime. Um, G2 will go as far as he can take them. Bot lane, we have Flacked, 5.4 KDA, 9.9 CS per minute, 69.3 KP. This is where stats lie. This is where stats lie. So, with all my minor region previews, I've said all along, and I'll say it again, I didn't watch a lot of minor regions play. I have the stats. I love when the minor region fans go in the comments, give us a vibe for what their team is like. That's a big deal um, because it only tells, stats only tell you part of it. When you look at 99 CS per minute, you say to yourself, Flacka did pretty well. I mean, he, did, he probably won lane. 5.4 KDA, didn't die much. Good KDA, 69.3 KP, that's solid. He was the player that hurt this team. His champion limitations hurt them. Laning hurt them. His excuse me, terrible positioning hurt them, excuse me again, his disrespect for his opponent hurt them, um, he hurt G2 a lot. A lot of these things are correctable, um, but that comes with an experience. Getting it out of the way before Worlds is the best, if it is out of the way. 26.1 damage share, 563 damage per minute. This means Caps dealt more damage than Flacket did. That's a problem. That's where that damage went. Your bot laner is not the best player on your team right now. Now, obviously, um, you look at a team and you say, oh, well, Kanavi's the best player on JDG, or Knight's the best player on top, and even Trophy's the best player on Gen G. And you say to yourself, okay, well, Caps is the best player on G2, so he should be the, the leader. And it's like, not in this meta. 
in this meta, the bot lane should have been the one doing it, dealing the most damage. And like you look at all the other teams, right? That's why this team is kind of weird. We see a lot of weird things with how playoffs went for this team. Um, like this, this bot lane KP is around 68, 69%. A lot of teams we see at 75, up near 80%. What does that mean? A lot of the fights are going on in bot lane, but that didn't happen. A lot of the fights happened around mid lane for this team, if they happened at all. Um, and the damage is not being dealt by Flacid. So behind at 15 minutes, one solo kill, seven champions in 10 games. We had a Yasuo, we had two Seraphine games. I mean, the guy played a ton of different things. The weird thing is with this team, the AD carry doesn't play Senna. The AD carry plays the fat, um, the, the feeding part of the bot lane. So that's another weird thing about this team, right? Support, Targamus, 6.1 KDA, 68.5 KP, one cleared ward every four minutes, one dropped ward every four minutes, eight champions in 10 games. The only champion he played multiple times was Senna. So, three Senna games. Oh, actually, I just skipped over Flacket's international stats. I apologize. MSI 2022, third, fourth, 13.8, um, KDA, nine CS per minute, 59.7 KP. So, Targamus. I thought Targamus was their best player at MSI. I really did. I thought him, he carries Flacket. He really does, and it continues to be the case. Um, people didn't like that at the time, but hopefully they're coming around to the realization that that is what is happening. I do believe Targamus' champion pool is really awesome. Um, the willingness to play many different champions, being open-minded to possibilities within your comp, will give you an inherent advantage. Is it enough to overcome mechanic diff, hands diff? Maybe not, right? But it helps. Um, a lot of people might say, well, no, you just play what's meta and you see what happens. No, that's the way to lose. If you, if there's a hands diff, that's how you lose the game. So Targamus being willing to do a lot of different things, sees Trimby play Soraka, he tries Soraka. That looked like it was on a whim because it was awful. But did he say to himself, Clearly, if other people are playing this, it must work. So I'm going to try it. There is value in that. There really is. Um, and I think Targamus is definitely in the conversation for one of the better Western supports right now. And he should be in the conversation in the top 10 supports in the world. I think that's without a doubt. I think he's a very good player. Um, MSI 2022, third, fourth, 12, 8, 2, 3, 2, KDA, 57.8 KP. So we're going to talk about Flackett and Targamus's. MSI at the same time. Like I said, Targamus carried Flacket, and that's indicated by the 50s, the high 50s KP. Targamus did not go around and try and get Caps ahead, did not try and go and get Broken Blade ahead. Wasn't he was alongside Flacket, like holding his hand, and was like, okay, well, we're just going to kind of do our own thing and everybody else do theirs. And in the end, G2. In Rumble State struggled, um, but they had a good run given the fact they have a very inexperienced team in three roles internationally. So um, that is what it is. But uh, this team, there's a lot of question marks with this team. Going into the playoffs, I thought that they were the best Western team. I had them throughout the playoffs. I had them as high as six on my power rankings, and I'm not going to back off of that. At the time, they were crushing it. You can't deny that. They were winning with bot lanes that you hadn't seen them play. All of a sudden, they were doing this and that, right? Go and play Rogue, and they completely laid an egg. I still have them as the top Western team, just to have them eighth now. Um, we're going to see if their weekend at Malmo was just an aberration, and it was just a bad week. You know, did they eat some sus food or something, and, and it upset them? Did they, uh, you know, not sleep in the hotel well? You know, or did they just miss the boat on the meta, or did they just lose? Those are all possibilities, right? You need to see more than just one series to kind of solidify what is going on. So we'll see what is the case going into uh, Worlds. Comment down below with your opinions. Like the video if you like it. Subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content. Become a YouTube member. Follow me on Twitter. Join the Discord. And thank you for watching.